Hello and thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's show. At nearly 60, has Barbie become high art? We're at her first ever exhibition at a Paris museum. Alberto Giacometti in Africa. The work of one of the greatest artists of the 20th century has its debut in Morocco. And the history of Impressionism at Paris's best small exhibition space. Blonde and busty with a tiny waist, she was once one of the most popular toys in the world. But in recent years, a backlash over the message Barbie's body shape sends to young girls, plus competition from other dolls, has led to falling sales. As she hits the headlines again because of the launch of new, more realistic models, Paris's Museum of Decorative Arts is looking back at the iconic doll throughout the years. I went along to check out the exhibition. Barbie, you're nearly 60, but you don't have a single wrinkle. How do you feel? First time a museum in France is paying tribute to you. That must mean you're officially a cultural icon. I think we better go inside to get some more information. Let's go. a doctor, and she's even run for president. Barbie has had around 150 professions. The creation of American businesswoman Ruth Handler, who named the doll after her daughter Barbara. Thanks to Barbie, their family business Mattel broke toy selling records. Why was Barbie so revolutionary when she was created in 1959? When she appeared, she really was a new way of playing for children because children used to play with dolls that, that looked like a baby. So the play was about imitating your mother. So when Rusnler decided to create Barbie, um, she really wanted to offer little girls a doll that look like a woman and that allow girls to project themselves into their future life. Like every famous icon, not everyone loves her. With her tiny waist, stick thin legs and petite frame, Barbie has been accused of promoting an unhealthy body image. In 1963, the doll came with a book entitled How to Lose Weight, with instructions to not eat. Research has also found with her 36-inch chest and 18-inch waist, Barbie would lack the 17% body fat needed to menstruate. Earlier this year, Mattel introduced some new body shapes for Barbie. Now there are something like seven skin tones, 24 hairstyles and 22 eye colours to reflect a broader view of beauty. What do you think of all these new Barbies? Barbie is really a brand who is known all over the world and Mattel has always been very careful about uh, reflecting the diversity in the world and in their clients. So the first black Barbie uh, appears in, um, in 1968 in the middle of racial crisis in the United States. So this question of diversity is really not a new matter for Mattel. And uh, in 2016, the big new step is the shape of the body. Barbie is so iconic, also because she never really changes. Andy Warhol did a portrait of her Oscar de la Renta, Paco Rabanne and Jean-Paul Gaultier have designed clothes for her. With so many different versions of Barbie, doesn't she risk losing her identity? No, um, and she changed over the years, but people really didn't notice because it 
always small changes, her makeup, the shape of her face, the look of her body. So it's always, they are really always uh, observing their environment, what is new and what is trendy in fashion. When Mattel decide to collaborate with uh, a designer, the deal is about getting into Barbie's world. So you are not allowed to invent a new Barbie. You have to stick to what she is and what she represents for people who love her. <laughs> Ça me rappelle des souvenirs d'enfance et franchement c'est génial. C'est super de voir autant de diversité et de voir comment elles sont créées aussi. Du découpage du tissu, des dessins, on ne se rend pas compte du tout le travail qui, peut générer, qui est généré derrière tout ça. Quoi. Elle avait quand même un look de femme euh, euh, avec de la poitrine et puis un physique qui n'était pas du tout celui d'une femme euh, réelle en fait. Hein. Mais je pense que les petites filles ne voient pas ça en fait. Peut-être les parents qui, qui identifient ça. Comme si tu avais plein d'amis mais en plus petit. Since 1961, Ken and Barbie have had an on and off relationship. They split up in 2004. What's the story now then? Um, in 2004, Barbie met an Australian surfer who is Blaine. So she decided to run off from Ken and try to leave her story with Blaine. But uh, Blaine is not really a success. So in 2011, Mattel decided to make a huge comeback for Ken and there, are, there is a big marketing campaign about uh, Ken trying to come back to Barbie through Match.com and so there are videos and there are huge billboards in New York City and Los Angeles to uh, show how Ken wants to convince Barbie to come back together. Whether you see her as just a toy or perhaps a good or bad role model for young girls. You can see Barbie's role in our cultural history over the past 60 years here at the Museum of Decorative Arts in Paris until September. See ya. Next, he's been called one of the greatest artists of the 20th century and his sculptures have been among the most expensive pieces of art to ever sell at auction. Now, a retrospective of Alberto Giacometti brings together more than 100 of the artist's major pieces in Morocco. It also highlights his little-known work and his encounters with African art, as Josh Vardy reports. Alberto Giacometti in Africa. The Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art in Rabat has brought together this first retrospective of the Swiss artists on the continent. Some of these works have never been shown in public before. Catherine Grenier, a Giacometti expert, says the exhibition aims to demonstrate the common themes of his work. Giacometti was born into a family of artists. He was practically raised in an artist's studio. His first subjects were his family, who inspired him throughout his life. The exhibition, in fact, starts with them. There's his father, brother, mother and sister. Giacometti first found success in the 1930s. Salvador Dali spotted his landmark piece La Bolsa Spondu in a Parisian gallery, and with that, the artist was welcomed into the surrealist movement. Often with Giacometti, the ball represents the eye, or an eye which is under threat. The subject of vision is the most persistent and most important throughout his career. Giacometti rarely left his studio, spending his time perfecting his skills. He relied on museums to learn about other cultures. Non-Western sculptures, especially African art, were an inexhaustible source of reference for him. Because these works have an iconic, timeless quality. That's really at the heart of his artistic research. Walking Man is among the pieces on display. This is the first time the work's been presented in its original material, plaster. It's wonderful that art can cross borders and that this collection has come to Morocco. Because at the end of the day, art, or what we call Western art, is not very known in Morocco. Giacometti wanted his work to be open to the world and to cross cultures. This first African retrospective shows that his aim for universal appeal was successfully realized. 
now to an exhibition by one of the most important German artists alive today. Heinz Mack co-founded Zero, one of the most influential movements in modern art, creating a platform for the devastated cultural landscape of post-war Europe. Spectrum is the name of his show at the Periton Gallery, his first in Paris in 40 years. The curator describes his work as always on the move. He's obsessed by movement, uh, by the dyna dynamic of the composition. Everything is rotating, turning, you have traces of painting. And it's not only about the work moving itself, it's about you moving as a spectator. It's you being activated by the work. Uh, it's not performance, this is not, it, it's participative. That was the curator of Heinz Max exhibition in Paris. Now we're going to end at what's perhaps Paris's best small museum. The Jacquemart André Museum is looking back at the history of Impressionism in the open air studio Impressionists in Normandy. The exhibition is on until July. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.